Good evening and welcome to our webinar titled, Designing a Timber Frame Specifically for Your Budget. I would like to thank Timbercraft for sponsoring tonight's event. For more than 40 years, Timbercraft has achieved the highest level of satisfaction by creating homes that fulfill your dreams in both form and function. Timbercraft's goal is to help you create a place that is built for your life. Visit Timbercraft.com to learn more and view their timber frame home plan. Our speaker for this evening is Bob Sternquist, a fifth generation builder. You could say timber framing is in Bob's blood. Born and raised in Los Angeles, California, he worked in the building trades with his father all his life, including a once in a lifetime opportunity to help build the Olympic Village when LA hosted in 1984. Bob hadn't planned to remain in the building trades, but as fate would have it, after moving to Michigan in 1996, he was introduced to timber framing and fell in love with the art, beauty, and majesty of this ancient craft. He grew timber craft from humble beginnings with a single location in the Midwest to a multi-state enterprise with two full design and fabric fabrication shops, one in the Midwest and the other in Washington State. In timber framing, Bob has found his passion and his life work, his dedication to bring your dream home to life. Joining Bob tonight is James Miller, lead designer at Timbercraft. James was born into a timber framing family and began dabbling in design when he was in high school. Working with Bob, these two men collaborate with clients by taking ideas and molding them into timber frame homes that meet both design and budget requirements. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that we will save time at the end of this event to answer questions. Questions can be submitted in the question area on the right side of your screen in the control panel throughout this presentation. Bob and James, I'll let you two take it from here. Thank you, Taylor, and welcome everyone to our webinar, Designing a Timber Frame Specifically for Your Budget. And what we're gonna go over tonight in our webinar are a lot of the different costs that all customers will end up having to have an understanding that will be associated with their project. And we're gonna really get into the fixed cost as well as a lot of the variable costs. And when we get into the variable costs, our lead designer here, James Miller, will go ahead and join me. Um, building timber frames is, is a unique skill and it's really important that you get the right individuals to help you as you go through this process. Again, I'd like to formally introduce myself. My name is Bob Sternquist. I'm the president and CEO here at Timbercraft. I've served in this capacity for the last 18 years. It has truly been one of the greatest blessings in my life uh, to build these timber frame homes. I mean, just where you guys build these homes are some of the most amazing locations, be it out on lakes, cliffs, uh, bluffs. It's, it's truly been a lot of an honor. The other thing is oftentimes the timber frame homes that we're building are very special and significant to our homeowners. It's not the first house, it's usually the final house or the dream home or the vacation home that uh, you guys have wanted and oftentimes it's a very intimate process and it's truly an honor to be able to help you guys uh, as we go through this process. Now as Taylor mentioned, uh, at the tail end of this webinar, we're going to go ahead and have a question and answer section. If we don't get to your question um, or let's say that you're watching this webinar on our YouTube channel, please feel free to go ahead and send those in. I'll be glad to go ahead and answer those questions for you. But let's go ahead and I'll tell you a little bit about Timbercraft. Our company was founded back in 1978 by Judith and Charles Landau in a quaint little town called Port Towns in Washington. Uh, I started a small timber frame company uh, called Hardwood and then I ended up merging my company and taking over Timbercraft back in 2000. Here at Timbercraft, we build both residential and commercial structures, but certainly our focus is really on the residential side, probably about 80 to 85% of what we build our residential uh, timber frame structures. But one of the things that really sets Timbercraft apart is our technology that we have here. We use the latest and greatest state-of-the-art Hundegger CNC milling machines um, that process all of our wood. But what really makes us unique is that the version that we have, the K1 version, there's only four of them in North America and I have two of them right here in our facility which allows Timbercraft to be the fastest and most accurate timber frame manufacturer literally in North America. Um, also, what's also key about Timbercraft and ties in quite well with this uh, webinar is that we do have full in-house design and engineering and the affiliation uh, with the engineers that we have here, we can stamp our plans in all 50 states and all throughout Canada. So we're 
very, very familiar with all the different design requirements. For those of you that are on the West Coast, we have to deal with uh, seismic customers that are down south. We get into hurricane and heavy wind loads. And if you're building in Colorado or, or up in Canada and the northern states, we, we're also very familiar with dealing with all the snow loads as, as you go through this process. So let's go ahead and dive into our presentation. Choosing the right designer for your timber frame home. Now there's a lot of different options that, that you're gonna have as you go through. Um, you can look at an architect or a residential designer to help you, or you should look at a timber frame manufacturer that has this in-house design. Um, I think it's important that if you are gonna work with an architect or residential designer, make sure that they're familiar with timber frame because there's special little nuances in the design that, that go along with the timber frame. I personally am a big fan of timber frame manufacturers that have this in-house design because most of our customers, they have a budget. And architects oftentimes will design a structure, call out timber frame, and then it's oftentimes sent out into the world to be priced. And it's kind of a crapshoot whether or not this project's actually gonna come within budget. So if you are gonna work with an architect or residential designer, make sure that they're affiliated with a timber frame manufacturer because they're gonna be very, very familiar with the pricing. Another important thing that I think that timber frame uh, design companies bring is that we have all the knowledge of what the spans are, the spacing, the different eave heights. Just last week, for example, I had a customer come to me with a $300,000 budget and they're building a beautiful um, wedding pavilion. It was a 40 by 60 structure. It was completely designed by the architect. Now the architect, to his credit, did a lot of research to figure out what the average spacing on the bents were, but since the customer had a $300,000 budget, I put my package price together, which was a little over $180,000. Suddenly the project was $75,000 over budget. So when we went up and we sat down with everyone, the architect first thing said, well, obviously we, we can't do a 40 by 60. We need to begin to go ahead and maybe turn it into a 40 by 40 structure. And I said, wait, hold on, time out. There's some little tweaks that we can make to actually help bring this in the line. And one of the things that I demonstrated to the architect is at 40 foot, the length of these rafters that I have to use are over 20 feet long. They're actually over 24 feet long. So the premium for the wood, it actually goes up 20%. So as I began to talk, I said, you know, there are the little tweaks that we can make is shrink the structure from 40 feet to 36 feet take the 12-12 pitch down to a 10-12, and suddenly the length of our rafters fell into a more economical length to be able to manufacture. And as I began to work through that, I also pointed out, hey, I really like this little catwalk that you have going through. That way the bride and groom and the wedding party can walk above the entire structure. But the problem is there's a lot of money up above and beyond the timber frame, just between handrails and spindles. And so what I did is I began to option for the for both the client and the architect, some subtle tweaks that we could make to the structure. And suddenly the cost of the materials came down by 30,000. Then the option of the catwalk came down another 30,000. And in total, I had saved $68,000 in the cost of the package without doing any work. It was just because of the knowledge of timber spacing, timber sizing, and suddenly the project was at 308,000. I was able to share with the customer you're $8,000 over budget. You're either going to need to massage your finishes, be it in light fixtures and other areas, or I need you to bring $8,000 more to the table. And we were able to actually get this project in line to come through. So I'm really a big believer in finding a timber frame company that has the in-house design and engineering because this is the expertise that we can bring as we go through it. Now, let's also consider what should you look for in the timber frame manufacturer. The obvious is make sure that they have in-house design, but also just as important as in-house design, you want to make sure that they have engineering, that they have the ability to stamp their plans. It's not uncommon that we may be building a municipality or somewhere where the building inspector isn't familiar with post and beam or timber framing. And so they're going to want that engineered stamp to make sure that this is in full compliance with all the different design criteria. But also what I think is critically important as you go through this, Anyone that's built a house knows that it's it's a bit of a process. And the only way you're gonna have the expertise is by building a home yourself. So I encourage you to go visit the timber frame uh, salesman or the owner's timber frame. 
visit and see what it is that they've constructed, but also most importantly, ask them about the process. How did the process of building their own timber frame go? And I think that will benefit you quite a bit as you go through this process. Now, your options in timber framing is to do a full timber frame and literally have timbers in every single room, every closet, everywhere. But truly where our industry is, is a hybrid timber frame. And hybrid timber frames are real popular because in hybriding, we focus the timber framing in the main areas of the house where you live. Um, great rooms, kitchens, master bedrooms, areas like guest bedrooms, closets. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I can build you the coolest timber frame laundry room in the state, but is that necessarily where you want to focus the funds in a laundry room? If you focus them in the high use areas of the home, hybriding ensures 100% that I'm going to be able to build your timber frame within your budget. So here are some examples of hybrid construction. This is an example of our Clarkston timber frame, and this is our ranch version. What we feature in this floor plan is a vaulted structural timber frame going front to back through the center core of the house. And then in the kitchen and dining, we have flat timber ceilings. And then also in the master, we have flat timber ceilings. Now the pantry, the walk-in closet in the master, and the master bath don't have timbers in them. Now another version here, this is, this is the same floor plan, but instead on the second floor, we actually put living space. So what we're doing here is we're using the structurally insulated panels to close the second story. Now, what, one of the reasons why I think our Clarkson timber frame is so popular is when you walk in this, it feels fully timber framed. If you notice on the second floor, we have structural timbers at the ridge and the purlin to help support the roof panels. And when you go into those bedrooms, a lot of people think it's timber frame, but that's just enough timber to structurally hold it up. Where we're saving money is by not necessarily having a hammer beam or a king post truss in those rooms, but in the high use areas of the structure, having all of those nice um, trusses and whatnot throughout. So hybriding is, is truly a way which we can ensure anyone can have one of these amazing structures. I'll show you a couple more examples of a hybrid. Here on the left is a timber frame great room that we did with reclaimed timbers. You can see how the conventional construction is butting up against the structural timber frame. Now on the right, this is a project we built in North Carolina. This is a customer that came to us with a very modest budget. It was about a $300,000 budget. And they asked, how can I have a timber frame home? And as you can see, we actually did a, some really beautiful hammer beam trusses going front to back throughout the great room. And then on the front porch, we actually did a full hammer beam structurally exposed. So there's a neat sitting area, an outdoor living space that is timber framed. But the other areas of the house are conventionally built. And again, that's really where hybrids are really popular because everyone can have a timber frame with a hybrid. Now, what I'd like to do is show you my house. I live in a flyover state of Michigan. Um, I'm out on 30 acres and you drive by my house and you have no idea that it's a timber frame because one of the things that was critically important when we designed my house was maintenance free. I travel around the country and have for two decades building homes. I didn't want to have to come home and maintain wood. So I even did vinyl post, uh, as you see on my front porch. But when you actually travel inside my house and you get into my great room, you can see my oak timber frame and cedar TNG ceilings. And my wife was really, as, as we were beginning the journey before we, we even knew that God was going to open the door where I was going to own a timber frame company, um, she was drawn to the timber frame for a couple of reasons. She wanted to have some color. I grew up wanting a log home. I, I had Lincoln logs and you know wood walls, wood floor. That's what I wanted. But she was really inclined towards the timber frame because she could still have some stone, have some color in the structure. We look at our kitchen. Um, again, she's got um, a tile backsplash, granite countertops. Then in my loft where we watch TV, fully timber frame there. And then I have an open tread staircase from the basement to the first floor, first floor to the second floor. Again, this is the most traveled staircase in our home. And it was certainly the most logical place for us to put the heavy timbers. And then in our master, I kept that design very simple. Nothing more than a 412 pitch shed roof above our master. 
and that's the main areas of my home where I live. Now, in other areas like my laundry room or my son's bedroom, if I would have put these timbers and had a, a decorative truss in his bedroom, he would have had ropes and he would have been swinging from them. So it wasn't a logical place for us to invest uh, timber framing in, in his room in those other areas. Now, one of the other things that we did is I wanted more timber framing, though. So one of my tricks, and this is my own personal word, is called trimmers. If you look at my office at home, I have four oak beams that are in the ceiling. Structurally, they do nothing. They are specifically there. They're timbers that act like trim, that give that appearance. And it's not uncommon with our hybrids that we do some trimber framing in other areas. Now, I'd like to show you my dining room. My dining room, we did the exact same thing. All of the timbers you see in this photo are purely cosmetic. There's nothing structural about them. The two posts, you can see a scripture that's important to my wife and myself that was carved into the beams. So in our hybriding, it's not uncommon that we do some trimber framing. So when you build a house, there's two different types of costs that every customer will have. Fixed cost and variable cost. Now, every project will have a fixed cost, and one of the most obvious fixed costs is the land. Now, most of the customers that come in here at Timbercraft have already purchased their land, but don't be fooled. That's not the only fixed cost that you're going to have with your project. Now, for example, every single structure is going to need a driveway, some sort of approach that needs to come into the structure. And one of the other things about a driveway, culvert, some of these other things, these are things that you can do ahead of time. It's not uncommon that as we're beginning to develop a relationship with a customer, it may take a year to go through design. Um, you may have owned the property for a few years. So there's some of this you can actually do ahead of time. For example, finding out what the utilities cost, maybe bringing the utilities to, to where you're going to build the structure. And also then there's just the generic site prep. This is a project in, in North, or Colorado. And this project here, we had a lot of big boulders and different odds and ends that we needed to move to even get there. So some of these fixed costs are different costs that you can go ahead and take care of ahead of time. Now the variable, well, I also want to give you an example of fixed costs. I had a customer uh, a few years ago approach me with a $400,000 budget. And he only wanted a 1,500 square foot home. He said, Bob, I want the latest and greatest. I want the best finishes that there are. Well, usually the best finishes on a house, the square foot cost is around $250 a square foot, 1,500 square foot home. So we're looking at a cost of a home around 375. So conceptually, it sounded like he had enough money. I then went out to the job site. And the first thing that I realized on this long, narrow property that he had, he wanted to build at the back of the property because on the back of the property was a hill that overlooked a really neat local lake. But as I measured it out, it was 1,300 feet of driveway. The utilities, he did have to bring in city water. He also needed to bring in the utilities in the telephone and fiber optics. On top of it, he had a small stream at the very beginning of his property. So we also had to budget for a bridge. So this customer that had a $400,000 budget with a 1,500 square foot structure, it turned out his land development costs were over $130,000. So he really didn't have a $400,000 budget. He only had a $270,000 budget. So it's important to understand that there are fixed costs and some of these costs, if you can take care of them. Now at this point, I'm gonna, I'm gonna welcome in James Miller, who is our lead designer here at Timbercraft, because what I want to talk, we should transition now to the variable costs, and these are the costs that, that you can control. Yep, and, and part of the variable costs is, like Bob said, is what you and I can control. So the first uh, variable cost that we look at is the size of the home. Um, you know, do you want uh, 1,500 square foot, you know, 3,000 square foot? It's really whatever square footage that you feel that needs, that fits your um, your lifestyle. Um, so the next one would be the architectural complexity. Uh, now as a picture shown here on the screen, it has uh, arc roofs, um, a lot of ins and outs, a portico shade. A lot of corners. This, a this lot house of had a lot of corners and corners will drive up the cost. Yes, corners. Some uh, builders actually have a set cost per corner. Uh, so it's one of the things we, 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 re, we look at um, when we go throughout the design process. Um, the next one is uh, construction materials. Uh, so what we mean by construction materials are 
like the foundation? Are you going with an ICF foundation, black, poured concrete, or pre-manufactured uh, type foundation? That goes even into the floor systems too. You can have open web trusses, um, eye joists, or even conventional lumber. So it's one of the areas that we always talk about and uh, review too. Well, another important one, for example, of materials would be structurally insulated panels, uh, which are super energy efficient that go really well with timber frames. But there is a premium up front to add those, but then there's a phenomenal cost savings in terms of heating and cooling strength. Yep, yep. And uh, level of finishes. So in level of finishes um, is what we look at is the uh, like kitchen spaces, kitchens and master baths tend to be a lot of uh, trim levels um, uh, that can go from good, better, and best. What we see a lot in kitchens and these custom homes are the best finishes. Um, you know, some clients like the Wolf Range or uh, Sub-Zero refrigerators. It's just something we have to pay attention to for cost to make sure that we design a structure that accommodates all those numbers. And see, level of finishes really can really skew a project. Um, I remember the two the first two timber frame spec homes that we, we built here at Timbercraft uh, are called the Meadows Floor Plan. Now, the very first time that I actually built this structure, um, I did everything basically off the shelf at Home Depot. They were nice, but um, my, my cost back then was $160 turnkey for this house. When I went to build it again the very next year, it turned in 60 days in, I accepted an offer, and it became a custom build. And as it became a custom build, that customer went from, didn't get anything from Home Depot. They were granite countertops, all the nice end, and the square foot cost on that home finished at $80 more square foot, and that really skewed the overall cost. But one of the things I always see you work with customers with is the Delta. Yeah, so um, Delta simply puts the three main cost levels in what we consider as the turnkey. Uh, you have the square foot, budget, and level of finishes. These are the three main uh, portions that as a client that we work with you uh, to make sure everything coordinates well in the design and gets you what you need and what you want um, with the budget. Uh, kind of an example of like a square foot um, part of the, how the Delta works here is if you find that the square footage you're having um, isn't fitting all your needs and your lifestyle, um, one thing you can do is increase your square footage but you can see how then it relates to level of finishes. So if you increase square footage, you need to look at your level of finishes in certain areas and possibly, um, you know, instead of you're going to like the granite countertop or, or the hardwood, maybe you're looking at a high-end laminate floor or um, just like next level down of, you know, countertops to get you that square footage you want. Um, and then the same thing for budget. If you're over budget, we need to look at the square footage and also level of finishes uh, so you go from like the best level um, or better level to best and budget um, and square footage needs to come down to meet your budget. Um, and then same thing for level of finishes. If you want to increase level of finishes, go from that good to better or to best levels. We need to look at maybe the square footage or increase your budget to match um, to, to match your uh, needs. So, so in other words, if a customer wants more square footage, it's yeah. going to affect the budget. And if you want to keep the same budget, you're going to have to add to the level, or you have to reduce the level, or add to the level, and of course the cost of the project will, will increase right. if, that, if that's the case. Yeah. All right, so what I'd like to do now is I want to show you the most popular floor plan that we have here in Timbercraft, and it's called the Clarkston. And I think this, um, I, I designed this back in 2001. And we've designed probably 60, 70 different wow. floor plans. Yeah. And this is the one that we typically sell. It seems to check a lot of boxes for a lot yes. of customers. Yep. It, it seems to hit a lot of the boxes of what the clients we see need. Uh, they like the open floor concept, uh, first level master. Um, and this also has adjoining outdoor living spaces. And then a garage that's really close proximity to the kitchen. They can bring groceries right in from the garage into a pantry. Uh, so it seems to hit a lot of clients' needs and wants for their uh, timber frame house. 
there's also a lot of versatility with this floor plan. If you have a slope lot, you could actually take the bedrooms and put them in the basement. Um, if you don't, then we can actually, you know, have a full two-story two uh, structure. So here's many of you have seen in Timber Home Living. This is a, an example of the, the rendering. And one of the things that's really beautiful about the Clarkson is a lot of the outdoor living space. As, as you see here, full-size hammer beam bent out front. And then uh, here, here's an example of one that we built uh, in the state of Washington, just outside of Seattle. Down yep, the, yep. The, the client here uh, wanted a little more of an intimate entry into their front door. So what they did was they just brought down that out exterior wraparound gable um, and then put some windows there above it to uh, bring in some more natural light into the loft space. Um, so just unique different. And, here's, and, and this is a version we built in South, South Carolina. You know, yeah. the porches are different. Yes, so this porch here, um, again, they, bringing down that main peak to, to allow a window for the loft space there, um, they, they didn't have the budget to turn the corner with the wraparound. So what they did was they stopped it uh, just at the front elevation to give that feel um, of the Clarkson that they liked. Yeah, it's, it's nice to give a flare on the outside for what's happening on the inside of the home. Now, here's, here's a, a really cool one that James actually put together in the state of Washington, and this house was completely off the grid. Yeah, th this one was off the grid uh, structure. So they have the SIPs, uh, the timber frame structure at the interior, but they have a big solar bank out on the ground uh, just off to the left of the screen here, um, and it, it's completely off grid. Um, they, they use wood for their uh, heat, and uh, it's a really unique structure. And what they did there to kind of circulate airflow through the main big portion of the house is they put a cupola on top of the house and um, just put a lot of natural, uh, allowed windows across the entire back elevation for light uh, to warm their house too. I thought it was neat the way, way you also designed the passive solar to be able to capture, capture that as well. And then obviously on the inside, you can see the structural timber frame going from the from the front gable all the way through. Yep. Yep. And and one thing that we see a lot of here is also that loft space there. You know, it seems like a high use, high flow area, uh, and also keeps your entry in kind of an intimate space where you're just starting to get a flavor of the timber frame when you enter into the house. And then as you walk forward, it just expands out to this great mass uh, open area. Um, and then over there on the kitchen side. Um, they, they put these what Bob said was trimmers. Uh, one beam in there is actually structural. So um, floor joists, right? Holding up, you have the second floor system, but the other ones are just cosmetic to, to keep the same feel and the look in the entire uh, kitchen space. I also like how, how with that one you did drywall yeah. instead of just having wood yep. everywhere. So as, as we begin this case study and look at the cost of construction, Again, we'll focus in on, on the Clarkston here, and I'll kind of let you talk about the main living space. Yeah, so the main living space that, that we consider as like square footage is the actual first level and second levels of livable space. Oftentimes also referred to as conditioned space. Yes. It's actually heated space. Yeah. Now, yeah. typically, the average per square foot cost is 200 to $250 a square foot, but the timber frame is actually included in that price. So this is really, what would you say, the, the, the turnkey price. Right. And, that, and that word turnkey is really important because this case study that we're doing here is of turnkey. It's hard, I can't put a dollar figure on if you're gonna do your own trim or you have to do your own painting. Right. So let's, so in this case study on the Clarkston, it is specifically turnkey cost as we go through the process. Now the next one here is the basements. Yeah, so basements, um, basements are considered cost inside that 200 and 250 dollars a square foot. That is included for your basement walls and that slabs are part of that cost. But where we see cost increase, like Bob mentioned, is your conditioned spaces. Are you going to have uh, like a bedroom down there, bathroom? Uh, rec room that you want heated. So then you start adding costs there, what we see is about $40 a square foot in increase. Um, However, most yes. of your designs are a little bit more than just bedrooms down there. Right. It's not uncommon that we're doing a full walkout and you're getting into, what, what items are you getting into when you go down there? Yeah, so when you go into like full walkouts, um, you're looking at, you know, big windows, uh, you know, matching what's going on above on your window wall. They carry it through into the lower level. Um, some of the things that people are doing wet bars and um, just other kind of unconventional um, 
living spaces that they have down there. This guy designs really cool man cakes down there, <laughs> I'll tell you that. So, um, And then the other area, and this is really growing popularity, yes. is the outdoor living. We touched on that just briefly. Yep, briefly there. Um, yeah, so what we're seeing there is a big movement, you know, uh, to go outside and enjoy the exterior um, as enjoy the nature and the views that you put these houses on, you know. Um, rarely do we see these in, like, subdivisions where you brought it up to another house, um, but these all have lots of views and lots of view lines that they want to maximize and want to enjoy outside. So what this has, the Clarkson here, is it's got the big wraparound porch, and what we've been seeing more and more of recently is actually extending the back bump out for a big covered section. Maybe it's 10, 12 foot out, but it's all covered. So you get to go outside and enjoy your uh, your scenery. And, and kind of the, the last area that, honestly, I think gets overlooked completely sometimes are the garage. Yeah. Um, and the garage, and certainly on this floor plan, um, I don't know we've ever built a garage in this direct angle. It's, it's, it's always <laughs> yeah. different every time. Yeah, this, this floor plan, as many times as we've done it, I've never designed this specific house. It's always take this and then manipulate it. And, and we always, yeah, turn it, turn the garage nine degrees from where it's at, um, you know, rotate it um, or detach it. it it's, it's all customized. Um, but as you can see here, once you start going up, if you're going to have living space or a bonus space, then you're looking at an increased cost of a square or foot cost for your garage. But the garage, what we've seen for construction, is about 40 to $60 a square foot. Now that's addition to condition of these spaces. Right, right. And there, there's ways in which you could actually bump that cost even above $60 square yes. foot if you get into really fancy carriage doors, Wayne yeah. Dalton, things yeah. like that. So um, so let's let's dive into a, the case study. The customer that came and I, I met with the customer, went out, walked their lot, a lot of their fixed costs, and the driveway was already put in. And as we sat down, they, they had a $600,000 budget and you kind of went, went over the square Right. As, as we began to go through, right, their, their, their desired square foot was around 200 or 2,500 square feet. Uh, that's right up the Clarkson's alley as far as square footage is. And and she has very specific wants for um, her master bathroom and for her kitchen, uh, which kind of led us to push the best finish level um, when we looked at their house. In in particular, her kitchen was yes. critically important. Yes, um, she wanted a gourmet style kitchen. Uh, she would not uh, let go of the Viking range, which was a big double door range um, that she had to have in her kitchen and a sub zero refrigerator. So, so as, as we started the design, and we knew that the customer had a $600,000 budget and told us right off the bat he wanted the best finishes throughout, we began to take those square foot numbers we just shared with you, began to apply it to the structure. So we took the 2,461 square feet times $250. You notice we're already over the desired 600. We're at 615, so we're already $15,000 over the budget. Then next, a thousand square foot garage, but this is kind of unique because right. normally garages are 40 to 60. This one came right. in at $80 a square foot. Yeah, what this client had was a three bay garage, and then below the garage, he actually had another. Uh, workspace there for a shop. So we used a spancrete um, floor system in the garage. You can park on top of it and then be able to have a workspace under it. And that was a walkout at that point too. Um, and then he had uh, attic trusses above the garage. So, so this is a three-story garage. And yeah. the initial design, that's what they wanted. And obviously we see where it's taken the budget. And then we got into the screen porches, and the screen porch, for example, had five corners to it. And we'll talk a little bit about corners. Corners can add cost, you know, the more architectural complexity. Yep, yep. So yes, yeah, they had a covered timber frame uh, screen porch and the front entry. Uh, as you see, they had uh, big piers. Um, we were using real stone as a finished pier look. Um, so it, the cost for the screen porch was elevated. And then they had also a lower level mat uh, suite in-laws, um, they want them to be downstairs, and they had a wet bar down there too, so it all added to the square footage numbers. So, so before we did a lot of design work, the customer had a $600,000 budget, but with everything that they wanted, before realizing the overall cost of construction, we were basically $150,000 over budget, but that doesn't mean that the project didn't go forward. 
It actually did. What we did is we start start looking at ways to economize to bring this into their budget. Yep. So as you, as you'll see, um, the, the desired square footage was 2,461. You actually shrank it down just a little bit, and I'll let you touch on that. Yeah, in the process that we looked at, you know, we saw the high use areas. Uh, we reviewed the entire footprint of the house and, and looked at the high use areas and where we could sneak um, some board footage out. Like in the bump out of the great room, they realized that maybe they didn't need a nine, 10 foot bump out. So they brought that back to uh, about five, six foot. So we took some square footage there. Now that was first floor and second floor. So that helped us reduce square footage quite a bit. And then um, also Raj, um, he, he realized that that was a little bit out of the cost he wanted to spend for a garage. So he actually brought the garage and squeezed it in a little bit and took out the man creek floor system and just went to basically a conventional garage. So it was a normal garage. Yeah, at that point. a normal garage. But what he did is on the first two bays, he had the attic trusses, so we still had storage and space involved. And then on the last bay, he did uh, scissor trusses, so he could uh, have his workshop there and be able to like, rotate timbers and posts or wood material in that space. But you also notice on the lower level, the lower level didn't change because right. they wanted that in-law suite with that little mini kitchen or wet bar right. that they had in there. Yeah. So so before we spent a lot of money in design and we were able to show the customer the cost of construction, you actually brought down the cost of the house by over $160,000. So now he's $14,000 below his budget. But the other tidbit that, that we knew about this project is that he wanted to hire his general contractor to weather type the house yeah. to put the mechanicals in, but he actually wanted to do some of the finished items like painting. Right. Um, he wanted to maintain some of the items himself, like some of the trim work around windows, uh, you know, lower, um, you know, trim around the doors and openings and different things like that. He was going to do. Uh, so we were able to look at that and also kind of like just uh, take off some of the actual square footage cost and reduce that, uh, which also assisted in his overall budget. And see, these are the things that timber frame companies that build, that are general contractors that are familiar with construction, this is the tidbit that we can provide in design to help you achieve this dream of actually getting a timber frame home. And overall, our timber frame really didn't change in this package. It was vaulted structural timber frame right through the middle, the open kitchen, dining, master bedroom, structural timbers on the second floor. It feels like a fully timber frame home, but he's not spending that additional money to have that. Right. So. What are the next steps on getting started? Now here at Timbercraft, there's basically three main things that, that we need. Um, a floor plan concept, and it doesn't necessarily even need to be drawn out, does it? No, right. Yeah, if you provide us uh, uh, just information of kind of like where you want different places, uh, we'll do something that's considered as a bubble chart. We'll start circling, um, you know, you want your great room at this one location, and then you want your master bedroom off of the great room over here, and your kitchen space, here so you start doing these bubble charts and start pulling together a floor plan and as long as you understand your budget and where your square footage uh, needs to be at uh, we can pull all that together into a workable floor plan. The, the next item that we certainly need is we, we just need to know the county where you're building because each county has specific engineering requirements yeah. and we want to make sure that we're including that in the estimating time uh, the estimated budget right. as we put it together but then lastly the most important thing is how much do you want to spend right and from there, we will help shape and mold it to fit your overall budget. But one of the other tricks that I have that I've used all these years, and I kind of consider build it backwards. Um, if I take whatever your desired budget, and I take 20 to 25 percent, and design your timber frame and sips to fit that, you will have and you'll be able to achieve this dream of being in um, a structural timber frame, a hybrid timber frame. And that, that's our ultimate goal as we go through this process. And a key note on this 20 to 25, that is built into that 200 and $250 a square foot cost. So it's not an addition to, it's, it's a part of. It's a part of. Um, so here, here's an example of a project that, that we built. Um, this was just the initial concepts uh, that the customer had. Yeah. And so this came in, customer shared with me the desired budget. And from there, I started to put a, a, a model together, but you actually did a small rendering. Right, yeah. So we were able to take the client's initial concept there and pull it together into um, something that we were able to 
work off of and create a floor plan for. Uh, then kind of like more of a timber frame elevation to kind of just show them uh, what they're looking at and, and make sure we're on track with them. And then from there, we'll do a proposal model there and 3D uh, renderings. Uh, for the client. Now, now, if you notice the, the model concept that I came up with, uh, on the right hand side, you can see how it's a structural timber frame, how the porch is a structural timber frame. But actually, as we got to the bedrooms, there's timbers in all those rooms, but it's just enough structural timbers to support the structurally insulated panels. So when people go through this house, they believe they have a fully timber frame house. I mean, technically, there isn't a fancy king right. post that's over, over in there. So yep. this, this is kind of like the next phase that we would help you with here at Timbercraft. And certainly, um, I'll let you explain your mind. Uh, yep. So, so from the initial concept and working through the plans, we're able to pull together a model and and take you through a walkthrough of your actual house before we even construct it or get into uh, construction uh, or production here. And so that's what we're able to do here. Uh, the client was able to see exactly how this living space worked out with his bedrooms and how all those timbers interact. Um, in those space. And really, the, the, these two pictures kind of show the two different roles that we have here at Timbergraph. James, yeah. James is on the left right there with the, with the model side, and then on the right, this is this is uh, the day before I completed the timber frame install and the panel install. So you can see how similar uh, what was designed to what actually came out in the end. So your next steps here at, at Timbercraft, uh, please feel free at any point to email over a floor plan. Maybe it's a floor plan out of Home Depot. Maybe it's a concept that you have. Please send it to me at bob at timbercraft.com. We'll start a little bit of a dialogue. I'll understand where you want to be overall pricing. And then from there, we will we will price the timber frame, the pre-finished tongue and groove, as well as the wall and roof system if you do want the structurally insulated panels. Um, that way you have my contact information. It's again, bob at timbercraft.com. Our uh, phone number is listed there. But one of the coolest things that I think we have here at Timbercraft is the Facebook page. And the Facebook page, um, if you go, if you look up Timbercraft Homes on Facebook, our customers actually get to watch the production here in the shop and see the pre-fitting and the whole assembly as, as we go through the process. And then when we're out on site, my installers go ahead and they upload photos all the time. But then you also do the finished homes. And, and James, well, every week we're uploading new finished homes. That way you can see how these different homes turn out. And here at Timbercraft, we literally work with Douglas fir, oak, and pine. Ultimately, the wood species is up to you, the actual wood species that we work with. But um, at any point, uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and shoot those over. Um, Taylor will. Go ahead and read those to us here in just a second. But again, if, in case your question doesn't get answered tonight or you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and feel free to email your questions to bob at timbercraft.com and I'll certainly, uh, we will certainly answer those questions for you. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to you, Taylor. Thank you, Bob um, and James, for a great presentation. Um, like Bob said, we are going to take time now to answer any questions. Um, just as a quick reminder, you can ask the questions through your control panel. There's a questions tab that you can use to ask your questions, and we will try to get through as many as possible this evening. The ones that we don't get through, Bob and James will reach out to you directly, just as Bob just men mentioned, and directly um, talk to you about those so they don't go unanswered. Bob and James, are you ready to take it from here? Yes, we are. Awesome. So the first question that we had tonight was, can you please touch, touch on general contractor selection? What would be required of them at time of frame assembly, et cetera? And I don't know how to answer the question from potential contractors when they calculate their estimates about what Timbercraft supplies to the con construction site so they know what materials they need to supply. Okay, well, um, here, here at Timbercraft, we basically have three main components that we provide our customers. Um, the the pre-cut finished timber frame is, is one. 
uh, the pre-finish uh, tongue and groove ceilings and floors would be number two. And then we typically build the walls and the roof with a structurally insulated panel. So those are the three main components that we'll provide. Now, in terms of actual um, what services do we provide on site, that, that ultimately is up up to you. Uh, usually we send a, a tech rep out to show the general contractor how to actually erect the structure, but oftentimes general contractors, and particularly right now with the economy being as busy as it is, it's not uncommon that they'll actually retain us to to do these three different components, but ultimately it's it's up to uh, the, the contractor as, as we go through it. But those are the three, three main uh, things that, that we provide, and it's usually the, the roughest shell of the house for the most part. Great, thank you. Next question. Does Timbercraft Supply accrue to assemble the frame or just a consultant who will work with the general contractor? Would it be good to have a manager from the general contractor visit your shop for an informal training session so they know what to expect when the semi-trailer arrives on their construction site with our frame and panels? Great, great question. You want to take that one? All right, well, um, Obviously, in, in, any anyone's welcome to our facility here, but but honestly, for the most part, when we show up at a at a job site, we're getting to a job site when the foundation's in, the subfloor is on, and that, that's a perfect building uh, spot for us. And it, the only thing that's going to actually be fabricated on the job site will be the post bottoms. We actually leave four additional inches for any variance that a foundation will have, but for the most part, there really isn't too much. Um, uh, for the most part, it's a grown man's Lego system. Yeah. What would you yeah. say? So yeah. it's. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, our, our tech rep, if we're working with the general contractor, basically we assemble the very last thing that we're going to raise in the air first. That way we build these on top of one another. So when it comes time to actually erect the structure, we're, we're flying it. And honestly, for the most part, um, in about an hour lead time on the job site, that's what we typically see because here at Timbercraft, we do build nationally. It's not uncommon that our customers actually come visit our shops, see our models and whatnot. But um, for, for the most part, they don't they don't need to make the trip here. We will help them. I think the advantage of hiring uh, our, our crew is that there's no there's no learning curve, our familiarity walking the beams in the air. Um, right now, I, I have a crew down in North Carolina that's doing a fully timber frame auditorium. And this has got a thousand, how, how many sticks? It's, uh, it's quite a few sticks, but it's 60 four foot wide, uh, about 37 foot tall or whatnot, it's, it's massive. And so our, our guys are real real familiar, they're, they're gonna be quick. Usually as it pertains to the timber frame, I would re recommend to any customer to hire the timber frame manufacturer to do the assembly of the timber frame. Once you get into the tongue groove and the insulated panels, it's it's just traditional stick frame construct. I mean, the, the assembly, if, if a stick framer is familiar with framing a wall, standing it up and sliding it into place, the panels aren't as difficult to assemble. The, the timber frame, because it is a grown man's Lego system, you do have to pay attention to, you know, you build to a certain direction, maybe head in another, but we, we have that familiarity. But honestly, for the most part, a typical, because here, here at Timbercraft, we actually pre-fit the structure front to back, the left to right, so we know that everything fits. A uh, typical 2,000 square foot home only takes us on average uh, four four days to erect the timber frame, maybe two days for the pre-finished tongue groove, and then I'd say the insulated panels are usually five to six days more than that. Great, thank you. Um, another question that we had was, um, about SIPs. Do you have to use SIPs or do you, they cost more or do they cost more than stick frame construction? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, SIPs, <laughs> SIPs do cost more. Up front. Up front. Up front. Yeah, exactly correct. And um, the, uh, one of the offsetting costs though is the speed of construction that the SIPs do provide because we could, like Bob says, we have a crew that's experienced in uh, erecting these SIP panels and putting them together. So it, it's a speed and your shell's completely enclosed within two weeks instead of trying to uh, you know, stick frame everything. Uh, but you can absolutely use uh, stick frame conventional uh, systems. So I do recommend, I think we recommend you, if you have a timber frame, uh, great room or vaulted space, I do recommend some sort of SIP or really um, look into SIPs at that uh, point. Um, 
yeah. you can go conventional everywhere else. Basically, it, it does cost more up front, but, but what you're getting with a SIP is a wall that's three times stronger but six times more energy efficient. And the reason why timber frames and SIPs kind of go hand in hand is because timber frames tend to be these tall vaulted structures, which typically could be a real booger to heat and cool. And so when you use the SIPs, so you've got a super energy efficient structure. And so um, SIPA, SIPA.org is... Um, a website that you can visit. There's a lot of different case studies, but typically when you build with the SIPs, you're looking at a structure that's going to cost half to heat and cool. Now, a reason why I think a lot of general contractors don't necessarily use the SIPs is, well, the, the SIPs are kind of the bread and butter of the stick frame, so we're kind of pulling that away from them. But overall, th there is an upfront cost to it, but the heating and cooling cost, the speed, um, instead of needing 120,000 BTU furnace, you need a 90,000 BTU. And so, so what you're going to be looking at and what we're going to do here with the SIPs is we're going to design a home where the furnace isn't turning on every 8 to 10 minutes, but every 20 to 30 minutes. And if your furnace isn't turning on that much, your heating and cooling costs will be a fraction. Um, when, when I first started uh, the, the company, one of the things that, that I actually built was a 60 by 200 SIP factory that we were manufacturing timber frames. It was 12,000 square feet. So the typical heating and cooling cost was in the neighborhood of $300, $340 for a 12,000 square foot building with 16 foot tall ceilings. And it, typically it'll take customers the, the additional eight to $10,000 you may spend up front on the SIPs on a 2,000 square foot home. For me at my house, it took about four to four and a half years to recover the additional. But I have a 4,000 square foot home with heat bills that are below $200 a month. So, and that's and that's what we're, we're really aiming for. If, if you're looking at building a home and selling it, stick frame is the best way to go. But if you're looking at a, at a structure that you're going to stay in for a long, long time, the SIPs really make sense because they're just super energy efficient and a, a phenomenal, a phenomenal product. Great. Thank you. Um, to go along with, t as we're talking about SIPs, we have another question. With SIP system, do you drill for electrical and pump plumbing? Well, great, great question. Yeah, really question. Uh, basically, with the SIP panels, um, the SIP panels that we that we provide here at Timbercraft actually have all the electrical boxes and conduit in ahead of time. The panels that we utilize are a urethane injected panel, and so if you can think of it, we'll add it to the panels. If you want a three gang, four gang light switch at your front door. We'll add it. Like at my own house, a goofy thing that I added up in the eaves were plugs for my Christmas lights, and they're on a light switch, and they turn on and off. So in terms of um, the electrical, we do add that. Now, geographically, uh, I'm originally born in Southern California, have family down in Texas. The, the style of construction is a little bit different. It's not uncommon to put the plumbing in the exterior walls, but with a SIP panel, we cannot do that. Um, the, the urethane, it doesn't make sense. Um, but there are two different styles of panel, one being expanded polystyrene, which is a white coffee cup foam. A lot of manufacturers use it. It's a great panel. We like the polyurethane because it has a higher R value. Here at Tempercraft, our walls, our six and a half inch walls, are an R40 wall system. So we're talking about a super energy efficient structure. Right. And with the electric, like, uh, you when we get to that point in the design, uh, I'll sit down with you and possibly even your electrician at that point to understand if you need like a four gang switch at your door or a three gang, and we'll just run and pick point um, areas where you want uh, plugins, outlets, wall sconce lights, um, any other type of lighting, and then we'll turn that um, into the panels. You know, so, one one other point that I want to I want to add is it's not a come and go. Well, how am I going to know where all the electric is going to be? Well, we're going to add boxes, and sometimes our customers don't know where they want everything. So we'll make it a point to add additional boxes. And if you don't want to use it, sheet rock right over it, and it's there. And if you ever want to go back and, and add to it, you, you certainly can. But um, the, the insulated panels, for the, if you're going to live in your house for the long term, it is a great solution. Here at Timbercraft, any vaulted roof, we actually use the SIPs for all of our exterior walls. We use the SIPs. But um, if you have a structure where you want flat ceilings, put a conventional truss on top of it, blow in insulation, because it's, it's truly in the roof. If, if the budget, maybe, maybe you can only have some SIPs, we always believe in putting it in the roof. All of us have driven past a house when there's a hard frost or a light snow, and you look up and you, you can see the lines in the roof from the rafters. Well, that's a compliment to the GC. It did a phenomenal job of insulating between the rafters. But every time the heat hits that, 
that rafter, it's coming up and it's melting the snow. And that's what we're, we're changing. So we don't have that thermal break every two feet with the insulated panel. And it, it, it just really goes well with, with the temper frame structure. Because again, these structures are usually tall vaulted structures. Great, thank you, James and Bob. That is all the time we have for questions this evening. There are more questions coming in and Bob and James will make sure that they touch base with those. We hope you enjoy, enjoyed tonight's presentation and on behalf of our sponsor, Timbercraft and Timber Home Living, we would like to thank you for joining us. We'd like to end tonight's event with this video from your sponsor, Timbercraft. Take care. Thanks again. Timber framing is one of the oldest styles of construction in the world. In fact, it dates all the way back to the Old Testament. That's why we traveled to Michigan and met up with one of the world's greatest timber frame manufacturers, Timbercraft. For over 40 years, Timbercraft has been perfecting the art of timber framing with state-of-the-art design and manufacturing techniques. Timbercraft has taken it to a whole new level. Here at Timbercraft, we are architectural craftsmen that design, manufacture, and install heavy timber frame structures, both for residential and commercial use. Our company was founded in 1978, and our mission is to honor our creator and our craft. What makes Timbercraft a very unique and amazing company is we do a type of construction that's over 2,000 years old. However, we've modernized it. Now we've brought it into our manufacturing facility so it's a controlled environment with CNC equipment. We actually service the entire country and we build internationally. When you build in different geographic areas, you have different constraints that you have to deal with. On the west coast, you have earthquakes and seismics, or in the mountains, you have heavy snow load. We have the experience to help our customers go through that process and bring their ideas to life and build their dream timber frame home. With a full in-house design and engineering team, Timbercraft is able to design and build structures anywhere in North America. Their focus is to design a timber frame structure that fits each individual client's budget. Every timber frame that we manufacture is going to be very unique because our clientele's wants and needs are very different and we're customizing each project for our customers. Some of our customers have been blessed with multi-million dollar budgets and some of our other customers have much more modest budgets. But one of the great things about a timber frame is anyone could have these big exposed beams. The way that we achieve that is through a process called hybrid. A hybrid timber frame is where you focus the timber framing in high use areas of the home, possibly the kitchen, the dining room, the great room, the master bedroom, a covered porch, the main areas in the house where you actually live. Then as you get into other areas like the breezeway, closets, a guest bedroom, go ahead and conventionally build those. With their unique style and attention to detail, Timbercraft's quality and craftsmanship is unmatched by others in their industry. At Timbercraft, we're dedicated to a particular style of mortise and tenon joinery called the house joint. The house joint is where instead of just the tenon going into a beam, the whole member goes in and then the tenon. And the reason that we do that is as wood dries, it wants to shrink and twist. And when it's in a pocket, you don't see that shrinkage. And if it wants to twist, it can't actually go anywhere. So the process that we do in manufacturing is we take and hand select each and every timber. Then all that detail joinery is milled on our CNC machines, but that's only part of the process. After that, our skilled craftsmen go ahead, take these timbers and we pre-fit or pre-assemble the entire structure front to back and left to right. We wanna make sure that it's a very tight fit and that it's perfectly accurate. And once we're done with that, we go ahead, disassemble the entire structure, label it, stain it and ship it however the customer wants. And then at that point, it's off to be built. But the key to this whole process is our house joint. It ensures that our Timbercraft timber frame is gonna look exactly the same today as it does 100, 200, or 300 years from now. As one of the world's greatest timber frame design and build firms, Timbercraft buildings are built for life.